Okay, we're live now. Good evening. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Labor Day. It has been quite some time since we've been before you all, but we certainly appreciate your love, your support, your positive comments, and we're just feeling really blessed to be back in action on this Labor Day. Excited, excited bringing you an eight-time Pro Bowler, uh, two-time Hall of Famer, eight-time uh, Pro Bowler, uh, Hall of Fame player, I should yes. say. From the Denver Broncos, we are excited about having him on Sharp Talk as we kick off season four. Yeah, season four. And just, you know, as we are all lifetime students, for those of you who don't know, I did some research myself. So Labor Day actually started in 1894 at the height of the American Industrial Revolution. And it was curated so that we could pay homage to the contributions and achievements of the American workforce. I hope you all are leaning into that on today. You're enjoying some rest, some recalibration and some relaxation. But without further ado, it is truly my honor and sincere privilege to welcome, as my dad mentioned, eight-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champion, recently named one of the top 100 Denver Broncos of all time, father of four NFL Hall of Famer, Steve Atwater. Uh, hey, hey, man, that sounds like a great intro. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about you guys? We're doing wonderful. Awesome. Super, awesome. super excited. We've been looking forward to this. So thanks again for joining us. As I mentioned, you have a long list of accolades, so we'll make sure we get to those. But I'd like to just press rewind and talk a little bit about your childhood, where you grew up, and what really shaped your passion for football. Well, uh, I'm, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I was actually born in Chicago. Uh, my mom and dad, they were up there for a period of time. And then I think when I was three years old, we moved to St. Louis. And uh, really, I, I grew up in St. Louis. Um, you know, I went to high school there. And once I left uh, for high school, uh, I never lived there anymore after I, after I left, for, left for college. Um, yeah, I had a great time there. Uh, Little League football. My, my dad got me involved in Little League football when I was eight years old. And, um, you know, I like the physicality of it. And, you know, we really didn't have the best situation growing up. And that was kind of a, a getaway for me, you know, to you know not have to worry about, you know, what we don't have or what we can't do, you know, on the football field. You know, I, I could be like Superman, you know, yeah. uh, and we had a bunch of great players, a lot of guys from that team I'm still really good friends with to this day. Um, so that that's really sparked my passion in football. And, you know, from there I went on and uh, played high school ball, obviously, and then got a scholarship to play uh, college ball. So, but yeah, that's that's where I grew up, St. Louis. So, well, I didn't know if you knew this, but I was actually born in St. Louis. So we've got that in common as well, because this guy was playing with the St. Louis Cardinals at the, the time. So, that's right. That's right. Yeah, pretty awesome. And then what, what college did you go to, Steve? I went to the University of Arkansas. Nice. Razor, yeah. Razorbacks, baby. Yeah, Razorbacks, Razorbacks. Uh, you know, some people from uh, from St. Louis went to Mizzou, but uh, – you know, I had one of my buddies who had graduated a few years before me, Bobby Joe Edmonds, and he went to Arkansas and uh, they, they were recruiting me kind of heavy. And, uh, you know, he was kind of like my big brother down there. So I felt a lot yeah. more comfortable going down there. I had, plus, I had a lot of relatives from Arkansas. My, my mom, her side of the family is from Arkansas. So, uh, you know, that made it a little bit uh, better to seem a little bit more like home. Yeah. Nice. Well, Steve, it's awesome to have you uh, on Sharp Talk. And of course, uh, I played around the same time you did, and you mentioned physicality being one of the main attractions uh, that you enjoyed uh, playing ball in, in St. Louis. And one of the things I always tell people that I like playing about the NFL is the only place in, in American uh, culture where you can force a grown man against his will to move from point A to point B, be paid handsomely and not have any charges filed against you. Exactly. <laughs> no jail time. <laughs> you know, and, and that leads me to the next question. I'll never forget. I think it was 1990. Uh, you guys were playing the Kansas City Chiefs, Christian Okoye, uh, yep. a punishing running back, 6'2", 250 pounds. And you were mic'd up in that game to play against Christian Oka Okoye and the Kansas City Chiefs. 
tell us a little bit about how you felt about being mic'd up in your second year in the league for that particular Monday night game. Well, you know, Dennis Smith, I played with Dennis Smith. Um, he's a great player, still a great friend of mine to this day. He was a guy who um, was my presenter for the Hall of Fame. And he and I, we were watching film. And obviously, you know, everybody knew Christian Okoye. You know, he's running over everybody, you know, just right, trucking right. people left and right. And, um, you know, Dennis, you know, he, he couldn't hardly lift his left arm up because, you know, he, he so many hits and, you know, he just he lift, he just kind of throw it up there. And we're in meeting rooms and he's left hand. He's like, like, hey, man, we got to, uh, you know, we got we got to we got to make sure we stay up high on them. Don't go low because a lot of guys are trying to go low on them. And, you know, either they they, they you know, get knocked out or, you know, he, he get the best of them. Uh, he's been a lot of guys with him up high, too, and he's got the best of them. Uh, but I, I remember when I was younger, when I well, actually when I was in college and uh, one of my good friends, he went and tackled somebody in the knees and he got knocked out and I saw his eyes roll back in his head. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to I don't want to do that. So. Right, right. Um, so I was on board with Dennis with, uh, you know, trying to stay up high and uh, it just hey, it just happened. Right. The, the play opened up and, uh, you know, he came with all he had. I, I came with all I had. And fortunately, um, you know, he ended up on his back. Um, now, obviously, I've, I've, I've tackled other guys who weren't as big as that. And, you know, they've gotten the best of me. Uh, but that, that that was that must have just been my day, man. Uh, you know, to, to be mic'd up for it too. Um, you know, you couldn't have couldn't have drawn it up any better than that. Well, it was a, a, certainly a, a great one of the all time great hits um, in the NFL. And uh, and and I have another question. Speaking of Dennis Smith, you guys were a dynamic, ferocious uh, safety tandem when we played you guys. And I remember, you know, whenever we played the fame, the infamous Denver Bronco defense. You know, you guys were the talk of our, our offensive meeting. Uh, Atwater and Dennis Smith, watch yourselves. Let, let me ask you, how much uh, of your intimidating factor, how much of that contributed to your success as a defense and your success as a secondary? Oh, I think a lot a lot of it contributed, especially back then when, you know, they weren't calling all of the helmet-to-helmet contact and, um, you know, just the physicality was – I think on a different level. And obviously I think the game was not as safe back then as it is now. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not certainly not complaining about how the game is now because I think it's better for the players in the long run. Um, But yeah, you know, we we used to talk about that, you know, we should sit, uh, try to go in front of receivers, uh, you know, when they're warming up and everything, we stand right, 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 right uh, in front of looking at them. Like, Hey man, we about to, (laughs) we just, you know, I used to go through in my mind, like, Hey man, they're they're disrespecting my my mom or my, or my wife, you know, they, you know, I just have my mind where I'm just getting madder and madder at them every minute. So uh, when the game starts, um, you know, we really didn't have any mercy, but man, I know I I was physical, but man, you, (laughs) Dennis Smith, man, he was, he was just on a whole nother level. I remember being in, the game, in several games where, you know, I'm running over to make a tackle. And Dennis Smith, he comes flying by me. Bow! And wow. the only thing I'm thinking is, man, I got I got to pick it up. Like, I'm not <laughs> going hard enough. So, you know, that was that was really inspiring for me, man. Uh, you know, it just helped my game, not only to uh, hear somebody tell me how to do it, but to be right there and, and to see him do it. You know, that was that, that was amazing. Now, now, let me ask you this. Um, and, uh, and I tell you, I love watching you guys play, obviously, it when, except when we played you. We <laughs> have all the bumps and bruises 35 years later to, to prove that. But because the game has changed so much, and because they focus on safety and the rules have changed and you can't have helmet-to-helmet contact, we'll probably never see a, a dynamic uh, safety tandem such as you and Dennis uh, ever again in the NFL. And, and, and I get that. Player safety should be number one. However... When you see some of those bruising hits in, in today's game, doesn't something run through you and make you feel good about oh, watching? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's just uh, football, right? Yeah, there there are still some players like that. You know, some 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 guys that'll take chances, uh, and sometimes they get away with it. But uh, yeah, I definitely like to see that. That, that gets me out of my seat. Um, and that's one of the things I used to do. Like after the games, I would go home and. I watched the highlights of, of other players. And, I, you know, the things that it made me get up was, like, when a guy's going at one speed and another guy just flies into the camera at a whole other speed and, like, whoa, man, that was that was cool. Yeah. And uh, I, I want, kind of wanted to get that to the fans. You know, I wanted them to 
kind of see see me like that, you know, as a player who uh, make you kind of stand up sometimes. Like, oh man, that was that was nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Steve, you mentioned being inspired, and you know, here on Sharp Talk, we like to talk about not only football but also family, fun, friendship. And I know your family. I got the opportunity to meet two of your beautiful children and, of course, your lovely wife, Letha. I know you're a father of four. So talk to us a little bit about your family background as well as how your connection to family and friends has really enriched your experience both on and off the field. Yeah, well, uh, I grew up uh, in a family where my mom and dad, they split up when I was young and, okay. but my dad, fortunately he was always in my life, but each time I, when I was in college, I go back home. I had to go to my mom's house. Then I got to go to my dad's house. Yeah. And then my wife and I, we met like, uh, when I was in college and like, we go to her house and it was kind of the same thing. We had to go see her mom and then her, her dad would come over. Obviously they had a good relationship, but then we also would go over to his house. And, yeah. uh, you know, we made up, kind of made our minds that we didn't want to do that. You know, once we got together, we wanted to make it to where, you know, when, our, when we had kids, they got older, we wanted to be kind of simple for them. You know, we don't want them to have to, you know, send us money. We don't want them to have to do anything for us just because we kind of went through that. And, um, yeah. you know, nothing, you know, no knock against it because, you know, just relationships are what they are. You know, yeah. every relationship doesn't work out. Uh, but we just, we wanted something different. And so I think that just, uh, helped us to fight through the, the, the tough times, you know, every, every relationship has those tough times where, you know, and, you know, she's probably thinking about, man, I, I can't stay with this dude. He's crazy. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I need to make a change, you know, but we, we never, we never went, went any further than just the thoughts and, you know, uh, hopefully we're not, nobody's having them thoughts nowadays, you know, we're so far into it, uh. But yeah, uh, but the family is really, really important to us. Uh, we, we have four uh, beautiful children. They're, they're grown now, adults now. Our youngest, uh, Malaysia, she's uh, about to go into her senior year at Stanford. Um, we have uh, three older boys. Uh, my, my, my youngest son, Paris, he, he lives in Florida now. He works for a tech company out there. Uh, my middle guy, DeAndre, is in L.A. right now. Um, he works for uh, an HR company, kind of doing sales. And then uh, my, my oldest guy, Steven, uh, he's a personal trainer here living in Colorado. Um, he and his, uh, and his friend, they went up to the uh, to the mountains to go hiking. So he, they're having a good time. So, yeah, we got, got some good kids. And, you know, the biggest thing we try to preach to them is, you know, just, just have a good heart, be nice, um, you know, do the right thing. You know, that's kind of been our theme over the years, you know, just, you know, show up do what you're supposed to do, uh, give great effort, you know, yeah. and uh, good things are going to happen. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Yeah, that's great. And and that leads me uh, to my next question, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, when we had the, the Hall of Fame uh, fundraiser here in Detroit, uh, I got the opportunity to meet your wife and, and, and very humble and, and cares uh, so much about other people. That's why her and my daughter, Rebecca, have connected. Yeah. And uh, and Rebecca told me about the awesome experience she had with you guys there in Denver at the uh, the Hall of Fame uh, fundraiser there. And the fact that you and Letha stayed there at the dinner until every single person left. You engaged uh, the people <laughs> that came out and, and supported the uh, the Hall of Fame initiative, which is to provide assistance to uh, to needy families. Talk about talk a little bit about that spirit of humility. Where does that come from? And obviously that's something that you transfer to your children and the reason why they are productive and responsible members of the community there. Well, I would say just, you know, from my parents, you know, seeing my, my, my mom and dad work hard and my dad, he would always tell me, Hey man, you don't ever want to, when things are going, going really good, you don't want to get too high. And then when things are going bad, you don't want to get too low. So you want to stay right there in the middle and I've always that has always stuck with me, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when stuff is going good, I say, no, don't believe the hype. I'm not going for it. And when it's going bad, I say, hey man, you know, it's, it's can't last forever. You know, it's gonna, gonna get better. Now, obviously, you gotta sometimes you gotta pull yourself out of it sometimes by mm -hmm. by uh, by actions and and positive thoughts and all that good stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I think just you know being around good people too. I, I have a uh, a close circle of really good friends and, and, and family that 
uh, that really care about me and, you know, we care about each other and hopefully I'm providing that same thing to them. Um, and yeah, that, 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 and then also I want to kind of treat people the way that I want to be treated. So yeah, like at the event, um, you know, people come, they spend a lot of money and, and then, you know, they, they, somebody wants to sit around and, you know, shake my hand and talk for two or three minutes. Come on, man. What's two or three minutes? That's exactly, exactly. You know, that's, that's nothing in, in the big, big scheme of things. So, yeah. Um, I just like to do things right, man. I like to do things the way I would want them done, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Well, it definitely shows. And yes, I mean, I, and I shared with Letha, it was just so amazing to see how charismatic, but also just compassionate and caring you all were and talking to everybody, making everyone feel seen and loved and valued. Like that really did touch my heart. Yeah, but and that's real though. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, I know. that's how it's I really true. feel, you know, I, because I, I enjoy those interactions as well. My wife and I, we both, we enjoy those interactions and, you know, we get as much of it out of it as other people do. So uh, it's kind of a mutual thing there. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I want to talk a little bit about Hall of Fame health, because that is how we all feels like we've been friends for a while, right? But we yeah. all did initially connect at the Detroit event when we met your lovely wife. And so we're all ambassadors with Hall of Fame health. And as you mentioned, Dad, uh, the so focus dead. is Oh, wait, you've got your shirt on. Look at that. How on brand. I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, that is awesome. So, you know, our mission is to reduce stigma, raise awareness, and transform culture around mental health, behavioral health, and substance abuse. What inspired you to get involved? I mean, I know you are a very busy person. You and Letha have tons of things going on in Denver and beyond, but what really inspired you to prioritize this work? Well, um, first of all, my wife, you know, that's that's what she specializes in. You know, she has her master's um, in, in mental health and, uh, you know, she's taking course and she's just yeah. a specialist in interacting with people. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, just our, our family, you know, I've had some people in my family who have had some, uh, some issues, uh, whether it be substance abuse, whether it be uh, just going through crisis and, you know, just seeing the, the impact that she has on them, not, I can't do it. You know, they called me. I, mean, I don't know what to say. I was like, hey, Letha, <laughs> get her on the phone. <laughs> you guys are the dynamic duo. You make such a great team. So that's wonderful. Yeah, well, she, she, she's, she's got the, the, the specialized knowledge, but yeah. I, I know the importance of it. Um, man, it, it hurts my heart. One of my, one of my good friends, when I lived in, in uh, I lived in, we lived in Atlanta for about 12 years, and uh, one of my former teammates, he committed suicide. He lived in my neighborhood and man, it just broke my heart. Uh, he had a you know beautiful wife and kids and, you know, they, they, man, they, they uh, really missed him. They didn't really know where it came from. And uh, you know, I just know if he would have had uh, some more resources that he could, he could reach out to that maybe, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So, you know, that type of instance and, you know, certain you see other, other people who go through things and, yeah. You just know, man, it, with, with with the right person to talk to and the right resources, things could be much better for them. So I'm I'm passionate about it as well, but I don't know the lingo. I don't know, you know, I, I don't I don't I couldn't treat anybody, you know. <laughs> yeah, but just your mere presence, and that was one of the things that we did get a chance to talk about in Detroit. Like because you all as athletes have such a dominant space in our society, and so when you all speak, people listen. And they take heed to what you're saying. And so your presence alone and just getting behind a cause like this is really making a tremendous difference in the lives of so many. So thank you for that work. I We know, you know how important it is. And we share that passion with you and your wife and all of the other ambassadors. So we're just really excited about all the great things to come. Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, and Steve, just you opening up and sharing your personal experience about what happened with your friend. You know, someone might be listening that needed to hear exactly what you had to say. And that might give per that person hope, hope to live another day, reach out to somebody, talk about whatever it is that they're going through and, and help save a life. Yeah, and that's what's awesome about using our platform and having these conversations and eliminating the stigma is so that people can come forward and get the, the treatment and the services that they need. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm with you on that. And we, we have a group of guys here in Denver and we got actually got guys that's really all over the country who we played together on the same team. We had this group text, man. We just check in from time to time, make sure everybody's doing good. 
Yeah. Um, and you know, we got you got to do that because you just never know when somebody's going through something. You know, most of the time they'll check out when something's going on. So yeah. we haven't heard from somebody in in a while. Hey, we we got to give them a call and just make sure uh, everything's okay. So I mean, you know, that's not a obviously a foolproof way of doing things, but I think just you know people knowing that somebody's thinking about them that that, that can help sometimes as well. Absolutely, I agree. Community is so critical in our journeys. We're not meant to do life alone, right? That's right. So let's talk a little bit more about football. Obviously, Denver Broncos, historic past that you contributed so mightily to, captivating present with players like Russell Wilson coming on board and really an exciting future. Yeah, I know, right? Everybody is just jubilant about that, including, you know, the, the minority ownership as well with Melody Hops and like lots of really exciting things happening in Denver. So I would love to know, what are your predictions for the season ahead? Denver Broncos win the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, that was easy. Hey, speaking into existence. That's hey, speaking into existence. Uh, you know what? You know, the football seasons are crazy. You know, uh, at the beginning of the season, everything, it looks like certain teams are going to do th this, other teams are going to do that. You know, the, the Green Bay Packers, the 49ers, the – Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the 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 Chiefs, you know, we got so many uh, great teams, and there's so many factors go into uh, winning games and and making it to the playoffs and all that. Um, I'm just hoping that we have a, a a season where our guys stay healthy, I think, and make it to the playoffs. I think we'll have a chance to compete there later on. Yeah, I'm not. I was just kidding around. I'm not gonna make any predictions. I don't want to put any pressure on my guys, <laughs> although I know they'll come through for me, but. Uh, we're going to, we're going to hold off on that. Um, but it's going to, I think it's going to be a great year um, for, for, for Denver. I, I think it's going to be a great year of football all the way around. Um, you know, many teams have improved themselves. I think the lions, they're going to prove a lot of people wrong this year uh, up there in Detroit. Thanks. Uh, Thanks for that vote of confidence. I know we need it. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. And, and I like your, uh, I like your mentality, your, your attitude. You know, I'm, I've always been one, that sees the cup as half full and not half empty. You yeah. know, it's the start. It's the start of a new season. Yeah. And look at some of the recent teams that have gone from worst to first. Exactly. Here in the last th so anything's possible. Anything's possible. But you got to have the right mindset, and you can't let you know past failures limit what uh, the future may hold for you. So I, I'm with you, 100. percent Yeah, and that's that's one that's a big thing for us as well. You know. Um, we haven't had a winning season the last several seasons. And, you know, I hope that that mindset, we can, we can correct that mindset because, you know, we got a new quarterback now, got new head coach, new ownership, a lot of new things, but still got to make sure that mindset is different once, once we get on the field for the regular season. And uh, we, we don't go back to the ways that we, we were, that we had the last uh, few years. You know, it's interesting because when you talked about, you know, uh, at the start of the game, standing there watching the receivers, your opponents, and how, you know, you would convince yourself that they disrespected your parents or disrespected your wife. to get. Yep. You know, I used to do the same thing, blocking against the Carl Mecklenburgs and the Rulon Joneses and the Lawrence Taylors. Man, that's my family. That's my wife and kid back there. You yep. breaking into my house trying to harm them. <laughs> you know, that was my mentality to keep those yeah, yep. rushers off my quarterback. That's my family back there. Yep. That's it. You, you got to play those. You got to have that kind of mindset and play those kind of games with yourself, you know, to maximize effort and performance on that uh, on that gridiron. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, football, it's not it's not the, it's not the, the average sport. You know, it's not the sport that you can, you know, be sitting there watching a movie and they get up. All right, I'm going to go play in this football game. No, nah, man, you got you got to get hyped up. You got to be ready. <laughs> you know what? Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, both of you, I'd love to hear, like, what were your routines, your pre-game routines? So hyping yourself up, getting in the right, right mindset and preparing yourself to go out on that gridiron and dominate. What were some of the things that you all did? Well, for me, like, uh, you know, driving over to the game or, you know, if we were on the bus, head over to the game, if it was an away game, you know, I'd be listening, I have my headphones on, just in the zone, listening to some some crazy rap music, uh, you know, Tupac, Biggie, you know, back in the day, uh, yeah. LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out. Uh, <laughs> so I, I used to be, I, they, they used to kind of get me in the mood. And then, like, in the preseasons, Sometimes I would get too hyped to where, like, 
I go in there first first play. I'm like, man, I'm I'm tired, man. I I don't have any energy yet. And then I, so I had to I had to kind of gauge it to where regular season game I, I bring it down just a little bit to where you know I'm not I'm not exhausted when I go out there to start the game. I what love what about you, Louis? Yeah, absolutely. Music music was, was a big part of it. And and from Thursday, if we had a Sunday game, from probably Thursday evening, Friday morning. I would not talk to anybody. I stay away from my family, okay? Because I was mad at the world. Right. You know, right. I was getting ready mentally. I didn't want to talk to. I didn't want to go out I, because you know what? I'm getting ready to go to war on Sunday. That's right. And I got to prepare myself mentally. I prepared myself physically, you know, throughout the week. Now mentally, I got to get right. And I was really, I was getting a bad mood. Oh man, <laughs> hey, I, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I know when my kids were younger. I'm like, like I, I can't talk to anybody right now, <laughs> you know, because it is a hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's just war out there on Sundays, and and the last thing I would I want is you. You know, we play national TV, the New York Giants, the Big Apple, New York against Lawrence Taylor. I'm not gonna let you embarrass me That's and right. have the commentators, you know, talk about me and my family is listening across the country. That was my main focus: not to be embarrassed to perform. Not to have my name called for holding or offsides or getting beat for a sack. I'm sure you can relate. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you guys for sharing. That's really neat. I'm sure there's some other athletes or just those of us who are looking to perform at high levels in life. So learning some of your rituals and routines will definitely help us as well. And I want to talk a little bit about your Hall of Fame induction. It was in 2020, correct? So congratulations. Well, actually, um, um, it took place in 2021. It took place okay, last but, year. We got okay. we, we're the 2020 class, but because of COVID, okay. they combined the 2020 and 2021 class uh, oh. in 2021. Okay, okay, good to know. Yeah, because I thought I'd remembered that your class was 2020. So talk to us a little bit about that. We've had a couple of others that are of your caliber: Barry Sanders, Eric Dickerson, Dwight Stevenson, all Hall of Fame players that have come on Sharp Talk, which we're so blessed and really grateful for. But talk to us a little bit about what that experience. I mean, to literally reach the heights of the most revered sport known to mankind. Like, what does that feel like for you? Oh, it, it feels amazing. And, you know, sometimes I still have to have to pinch myself uh, and say, man, is it, did, did this really happen? Um, but as I said in my Hall of Fame speech, uh, I don't think anybody, well, I can't say anybody. There are a few guys who are just elite. They, they could have did it with by themselves. But for me, um, you know, I had so many wonderful people who were, were involved in my life from Man, my, my my little league coaches, my my high school coaches, my college coaches, uh, my teammates, you know, so many people who have inspired me over the years and been there for me, my wife and my kids while I was playing. And, you know, even in college, my wife, uh, you know, who, who people who've been there for me for so long. And, um, you know, I get the spotlight shined on me all the time and I wanted to make sure I shine the spotlight on them on that, on that special day. Um, that's why at my hall of fame party, I told everybody in there, like, Hey, you all have a stitch in this gold jacket wow. I don't pull it out, but, uh, <laughs> it belongs to you. <laughs> wow. That's really special. That's really special. You know, I, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, when we used to play you guys, uh, and I'm sure you remember, uh, 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 Carl Mecklenburg. Oh yeah, that's um, my guy. That's my buddy. Yeah. Carl was a, a overachiever. It wasn't the biggest guy in the world. Wasn't the, the fastest, but man, was he smart and was he tough? Yes. You know, and, and, and so was your defense, uh, Rulon Jones. Now, I do have a, a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, Michael Brooks from LSU. Yeah, yeah, I know Michael it's Brooks. Not, that was my guy. Michael Brooks would put a knot on you quick. Yes, that was a, he's an inside linebacker, boy. He, he was come with everything. He was, a, he was a hitter. Yes. Was a hitter. And I'm surprised he's not received more accolades because he was a tremendous – uh, inside linebacker, one that you had to uh, prepare to play on Sunday because, like I said, he would knock your head up like it wasn't nothing. Oh, yeah. No, he didn't play. He didn't play. And it's crazy. Uh, you know, we, we have so many guys like that who deserve more recognition and, you know, deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, they just, for whatever reason, I don't know, they just they just don't get it. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully the guys will get there just due in, in due time. Well, Michael is uh, is a big Christian brother. Uh, he I love his memes, his posts. He's always posting uh, scriptures uh, in the on Facebook. Always encouraging and uplifting uh, believers. And I really uh, love him in Christ. And 
He told me to tell you hello, and he enjoyed playing ball with you. Oh man, yeah. Tell him, tell him hello. And now uh, we we've talked on Facebook a couple of times over the years. But I'm not a big Facebook guy. I just you know, okay. for me, I'll get in there. I'll be. I look up. It'll be two or three hours late. I'm like, what? What, what happened? <laughs> so I, I can't. I can't do it too too frequently. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Mike. We we we've, we've uh, connected on there a couple of times. Uh, I got much respect for him. And yes, yeah, please tell him I said hello as well. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Well, this has been such an awesome interview, Steve. We really do appreciate your time on this special Labor Day Sharp Talk Live. I know we had so much excitement and engagement and anticipation when we posted that you were going to be on and we used uh, your photo from the Hall of Fame where you were saluting. So we salute you. <laughs> right. because, you know, you are just an amazing human to use some of your wife's terminology. And one of the questions that I love to just wrap up with, and you've kind of talked about it throughout the interview, but Steve, what do you desire for your legacy to be? Well, really just, um, you know, I, I just want to be a good a good person. You know, uh, I want to try and leave this earth a better place than it was when when I got here. Um, and I think that the thing that everybody is looking for and is need, in need of is, is just love, man. You know, and that's what I want to be a spreader of love, you know, in, 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 in my own my own special way. Well, Steve, you're you're absolutely doing it and you've done it tonight, you know, um, and the. Uh, the mantra for Hall of Fame behavioral health is to raise awareness, eliminate sti uh, stigma, normalize conversations. And, and you've done that. You've done that by sharing the story of uh, your best friend or one of your friends that committed suicide. And that yeah. doesn't have to happen. There's help out there. There are right. professionals. Um, and, and another thing you mentioned that, that resonated with me, you know, when you go through the down times, you got to recognize this. You know what? This too shall pass. It's going to pass. Life Life is full, of, is full of seasons. There's highs and there's lows. Yeah. And you can't get too high when things are going great. Yeah. And you can't get too low when things are not going uh, very well. And, and, and you know what? This too, the, the bad parts, uh, the rainy seasons, they come and they go. So that was, uh, that was very uplifting and encouraging. And, and thank you for being a, a spreader of that message. Oh, man. Well, I appreciate you guys for having me on. And, man, you guys, I love it. Uh, Father-daughter combo, y'all doing it. Uh, you're doing a wonderful job, too, man. I see the love between you guys as well. And thank uh, you, brother. that's something that I admire. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, Steve. Take good care. Tell the family we said hello and hope to see you in the next city. That's right. We'll do. We'll do. Y'all take know. care of yourself now. God bless you. God bless. Take care. Thanks, Steve. Go Bye -bye. Broncos, baby. Yeah, there woo, we go. Woo, woo. go What's that? the new sign? What you doing? What's it? I know. He said, is that the hoop sign right? I'm like, what is, what is the Bronco sign? Is there one? We don't yeah. have really a sign. Why do we just salute? Hey, that was oh, the, so that's where the salute back came in the day. from. Ah, yeah. Okay, we're saluting you and the Broncos and wishing you and the team the best this season. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, thank y'all. Take care. Bye-bye. That was awesome. Steve is great. He really is. Oh, he's just, I am just so impressed by his humility. He's just yeah. got a spirit of humility. That's just yeah. who he is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and he cares genuine. about and he cares about people. He cares about people. He's he's not, he doesn't have a high opinion of himself and, and thinks that people need to serve him. When you came back from that Denver uh, event and you shared with me how he and his wife stayed until the very last person left, engaging yeah. people, talking yeah. to them, mm -hmm. because those are the contributors that came. To that event because of them. Yeah. I was so impressed by that. Yeah. He is amazing. His wife is wonderful. And just, it's another opportunity that Hall of Fame Health has afforded me, um, you know, as I partner with them and go from city to city, sharing the good news of what it is that we're trying to do in raising awareness, reducing stigma, and transforming culture. So, Steve and Letha are tremendous contributors to that cause. And I just feel really blessed to know them, excited that. We were able to kick off season four with Steve Atwater. We're excited about who else will interview this season. We're already having some conversations about other guests. And again, we appreciate all of your love and your support and your positivity and just all of the ways that you all engage with us. It helps to fuel our fire and keep us moving onward and upward. And I just want to share a quick message. I know that we are all going through a lot. There's chaos, calamity, COVID, cancer, just 
everything happening in our world right now. But as my dad mentioned and Steve alluded to, this too shall pass. So if you find yourself struggling or despondent, dejected, feeling depressed or oppressed, just know that this too shall pass, that God is for you and he will never leave you or forsake you. And I just want to encourage somebody with that message on tonight. Steve mentioned he wanted his legacy to be one of love. And that's not only what we get from people, but we get that from Jesus as well. So hopefully you feel the love of Jesus warming your heart tonight. And you're reminded that uh, God, God is with you. He's for you. And he will ensure that you make it through whatever it might be, you will get through. That, uh, that resonated uh, scripture, Romans 8, 32 and 33. It says, is God before you? Who can be against you? Amen. He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yeah. We think about the fact that God sent his son, the perfect son from heaven, committed no sin, lived a perfect life and died on that cross. Died on that cross because he had you and I in his mind. He could have called legions of angels to come deliver him from that nasty cross. And you know what kept him on the cross? Was the love that he had for you and I. How, she, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God be for us. He did that with a son. How will he not give us everything else? Amen. I, as you were speaking, I'm like, you know what? Greater is he that is in us, that is in you, than he that is in this world. So as we get ready to depart from this place, but never his presence, I just pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that he'd be gracious to you, that he would lift up the light of his countenance unto you and give you and your family shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you so much for tuning in to Sharp Talk. Enjoy the remainder of your Labor Day, and we will see you all again soon. So Salute. Salute. See you next time. <laughs> See you next time.